Good afternoon and aloha. Aloha. Uh, welcome to the Newman Center. Uh, most especially, we'd like to welcome those who are visiting for the first time or who are returning to the Newman Center. If you are visiting here today, if you could please stand so we could recognize you. Welcome Father Alfred's family who are with us uh, this afternoon. Welcome. Uh, yes, they're sitting right here, so if you can stand so they can see where Father Alfred's family is. There they are. <laughs> Thank you. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Just a few announcements before we begin. Our hospital hospitality weekend resumes the first weekend of June, June 4th and 5th. And we are still in need of volunteers. There is a sign sheet here at the, at the door. Our second collection for next week will be for the Catholic Communication Campaign, Mahalo and Events, for your generosity. For more information and updates within our parish, please see the Sunday Bulletin, parish website, and social media sites. Our priest celebrant for this Mass is our pastor, Father Alfred. I now invite everyone to please stand and to greet one another as brothers and sisters in Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We rejoice in the risen Lord who dwells among us. Through the Holy Spirit, we too shall see the Father who sent him. And so to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you are sent by the Father to heal us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of Mary and brother to us all. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light and life of the world. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Delivered by them. 
the apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers of Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, of Gentile origin, Greeks. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have accepted with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you, along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of meat,
the names of the twelve tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had twelve courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First of all, I had a funeral uh, 
uh, to help and organize and MC. Uh, Father Mike Sawyer, who is a Benedictine, uh, died, and we had his funeral this past Tuesday at the Co Cathedral of St. Teresa. Um, and of course, uh, Monsignor Gary Secor was the celebrant, but I still had to uh, MC that Mass. And then on Friday, we had a presbyteral ordination or a priestly ordination uh, for our diocese. And we have a new priest, Father Dario Rinaldi, uh, who was ordained and who will be assigned at St. Catherine's in Kapa'a on the island of Kauai. But leading up to Friday was made it such a crazy week. Why? Well, on Monday, Bishop Silva wasn't feeling well, and, um, and so he isolated himself right away. And on Tuesday morning, he wrote to us saying that he wasn't feeling well, and he tested, and it was negative. Um, but in case that he would be ill, he would let us know uh, for the rest of the week. But then here comes Wednesday morning, uh, we get another uh, note from the bishop saying that uh, he tested again and this time his test did not come back negative. And so here we are two days before the ordination of a priest. Uh, we are without a bishop. And so here we are thinking, okay, so do we cancel the, the ordination? Do we postpone it for another a week or so? Um, and, you know, Going through the mind of the ordinandi, Dario, who was already delayed a couple of uh, years uh, for ordination, this would have been such so devastating to, to delay it further. Uh, that Bishop Silva was able to call around the West Coast and finally one bishop was able to say, yes, I could adjust my schedule and I will be there to do the ordination. So what a relief uh, for me, okay, and I'm not sure for Father Rinaldi, um, but here's the thing. Well, I cannot arrive until Friday afternoon. So he arrived three hours before ordination. <laughs> Cutting it so close, but thanks be to God, uh, Bishop John Dolan from San Diego was able to make it. Um, but I was kind of relieved until I found out that this was his, the very first ordination that he's ever done as a bishop. <laughs> and so uh, I had to guide him through the liturgy itself, the, through the ordination rite, um, but it went very smoothly and so we have a new priest in our diocese. So thanks be to God. I would like to um, start off my homily by reflecting a little bit on our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles. Thinking about the, the first reading reminded me of this whole ordeal that I had to go through with the bishop and the other bishop um, and the hierarchy of the church. Well, in our reading, we heard that as the Word of God was going and spreading amongst the Gentiles through the ministry of Paul and Barnabas, some of the Judaizers came from Jerusalem and began to sow doubt in the community of believers, those who Paul and Barnabas preached to and converted. Well, these Judaizers insisted that the Gentiles needed to be circumcised and follow the Mosaic law to be saved. You see, they regarded that these laws of the Old Testament were still binding on all Christians. They were pagans previously, and so these Judaizers said that they needed to go become a Jew first, get circumcised, and then become Christian. And so not knowing who was right, the Judaizers, or St. Paul and Barnabas, the community of believers decided to send Paul and Barnabas and others to Jerusalem. 
to the apostles and presbyters for clarification. Here, this was the initial awareness of the authority of the apostles over the life and teachings of the church. And this is very significant because even still today, the bishops as the successors of apostles have the responsibility to safeguard the deposit of faith. They make up the teaching authority in the church. And so after hearing about how God blessed the ministry of Paul and Barnabas to the Gentiles with signs and wonders, the apostolic leadership made a profound statement and decision. First of all, they said, it is the decision of the Holy Spirit and us. Listen to that one more time. They said, it is the decision of the Holy Spirit and us. In other words, after much prayer and much discussion, the Holy Spirit inspired them with the answer. It was not just them, huh? It was the Holy Spirit that they received on that Last Supper, on that, in that upper room at Pentecost. This was the fulfillment of what Jesus taught the apostles at the Last Supper, when He said, I will send you the Holy Spirit. He will teach and guide you to the truth. And what was that truth? That baptism, not circumcision, was necessary for salvation. Following the Mosaic Law was not required any longer. The only requirement was the turning away from their former pagan practices. Turning away from their former ways of life. In the newness of life in Jesus Christ. Perhaps a lesson for us here is that there must be an authority that can resolve conflicting practices or thoughts or dissensions in the community of believers. The apostles along with the presbyters met together and discussed the matter. The reading, however, reminded us that we must not depend only on human authority. We should keep in mind that the decision of the apostles and the elders was credited to the Holy Spirit. And so this poses a, a, a question for us. What would happen if we followed the practice of the apostles, namely invoking and following the guidance of the Holy Spirit in major decisions in our lives? Or how about this? What would happen if we followed the practice of the apostles, namely invoking and following the guidance of the Holy Spirit in major decisions in the church. What a dynamic uh, church we would be. Then in the gospel that we heard, we continue to hear St. John's narrative of the Last Supper where Jesus gave a number of teachings as part of His last will and testimony. In this farewell discourse, He speaks repeatedly of the centrality of love as a sign of our union with Him and as a sign of our discipleship. He speaks of the need to keep His word because we love Him. He teaches us that the Father loves us and as we love and keep His Word, God will dwell in us and we in Him. Specifically in today's passage, Jesus teaches what the later apostles will better understand and act upon. That the Father and the Son will send the Holy Spirit upon them and dwell in them. As our advocate, our helper and intercessor, the Holy Spirit will teach us everything concerning the truth revealed by God. And so, this also means that we too, as baptized, those who receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
participate also in the teaching office of the church with the census fidelio, with the sense of the faithful. Are we practicing that gift? Then Jesus reminds them that the peace he gives them is not a greeting, but the fruit of salvation which brings life. You see, peace in Hebrew is shalom. However, its concept also means wholeness, health, safety, and permanence. Jesus gives us a peace that fulfills our deepest wants and desires. But here's the thing. Do we cooperate with that gift? Do we accept that gift of peace? Do we allow the Lord to work in our lives? Finally, he tells them he is going away but will come back. He is referring not only to his upcoming death and resurrection, but also to his ascension and his second coming in glory. And we too receive the Lord both in word and sacrament at every celebration of the Eucharist. And so it's so important for us to gather at the Eucharist to receive this great gift where Jesus gives himself sacramentally to us. And so do we go to Mass regularly? Do we participate in the life of the church? And do we build up our spiritual life and relationship with Him? Those are the questions that we should ask ourselves on this sixth Sunday of Easter. But as we continue on this Easter season, may we rejoice knowing that God continues to be with His people through the Holy Spirit and that His church will withstand any crisis or issue throughout the ages. May we be attentive then to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and listen to Him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in a conscious pilot, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess for baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus tells us not to let our hearts be troubled. With confidence, we bring our cares and concerns to the God who loves us and listens to our prayers. For the church, that we may always seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we witness to our faith in a constantly changing world. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of Christ left with us may be extended to our neighbors across the street, across the country, and across the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we may always love the Lord and keep his word and be a visible sign of God's dwelling place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our student community, that they may be a sign of hope and renewal in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Alfred, our pastor, who celebrates his fifth anniversary of presbyteral ordination, that the Holy Spirit constantly guide and strengthen him in his vocation and that we may sustain his ministry by our love, our constant prayer, and our trust in his leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord for the prayers on our parish website, prayer basket, and for those we now mention. For the repose of the souls, Tessa and Matthew Vincent, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Loving God, hear the prayers we offer before you and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
time to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the ovation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with last oh joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory. As Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and St. John Henry Newman, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for the faith and help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope and Larry our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. This is gracious speech in the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. dare to say. Thank you. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord, on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Pray that you have a blessed week and please stay safe and healthy. We hope to see you on next weekend. Please take over parish bulletin for more information on what's happening in our parish and in our diocese. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Before you bless us, Father, we would like to do a special blessing for you on this special anniversary of your um, Ordination, your fifth anniversary. Yay! So, if I can have everyone extend their right hand to the Father as we pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gifts of our priest and pastor, Father Alfred. 
Through him we experience your presence in the sacraments. Help Father Alfred to be strong in his vocation. Set his soul on fire with love for your people. Grant him the wisdom, understanding, and strength he needs to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Inspire him with the vision of your kingdom. Give him the words he needs to spread the gospel. Allow him to experience joy in his ministry. Help him to be an instrument of your divine grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns as our eternal priest. Amen. Uh, even though it feels like it's only been five years, um, it feels forever already. Um, thank you, Finn and Joe, for singing that um, meditation song. That was um, a song that I requested when I was ordained. Um, and so it was a good reminder for my, myself uh, of the priesthood. And so thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Uh, but thank you for, for praying and blessing uh, me. Today, please uh, continue to pray for me. The life of a priest is not easy. Um, but know that you are in my prayers um, as well every single day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your love. Amen.